founding of the New Age movement can be traced back to the 19th century in Theosophy. This is the group that largely popularized this belief that we are heading out of the age of Pisces and into the astrological age of Aquarius, which to them will be an age of unity of humanity, an age of enlightenment, a spiritual age of consciousness, so to speak. very clear, yes, there's going to be a one world, political, economic, religion, and this is what all the globalists, the, the elite, the high level occultists, the high level new world order people, this is what they're wanting, this is what the Bible pretty much clearly predicts as well, and this is obviously what we're moving to. The Freemason and one world government advocate Zbigniew Brzezinski said the following in his work Between Two Ages, quote, the technotronic era involves the gradual appearance of a more controlled society. Such a society would be dominated by an elite, unrestrained by traditional values. Soon it will be possible to assert almost continuous surveillance over every citizen and maintain up-to-date complete files containing even the most personal information about the citizen. This admitted New World Order agenda to create a one-world government that rules over humanity is not only political, it is also spiritual and based on what is known as the New Age. This can be verified with irrefutable documentation. Most of the Christians doing this kind of work have been silenced, so I set out across the border to speak to the few researchers that are still left. There are not many researchers left who have not been deceived by the New Age. Speaking with these people helped confirm my position even more. The New World Order exists the elite are occultists who adhere to New Age doctrines and they are responsible for this new trend of discrediting Christianity, Jesus Christ, and the Christian New World Order researchers. There is a voluminous amount of data that I have obtained in my research on this subject, but after watching this production, do not believe me. Don't believe a word of what I'm saying. Do your own independent research and verify this for yourself. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy. Here's the way they look at it. Here's their metaphor. Adam and Eve were held prisoner in the Garden of Eden by an unjust, cruel, and vindictive God. Until Lucifer, through his agent Satan, set man free from this garden by giving him the gift of intellect. Through the use of intellect, man will conquer the earth, will conquer nature, and will himself become God. It's taught in every Masonic temple in this land, every secret brotherhood, every secret society, every mystical temple, every occult organization teaches the Luciferian philosophy. To understand the New World Order and the New Age worldview, we must go back into history and examine its origins. But first we must define our terms. By New Age, I am speaking about a worldview that has many facets and components, such as astrological and zodiacal beliefs in the New Age concept, channeling higher powers to achieve knowledge, meditation, the belief that all is one or forms of monism, the belief that we can attain godhood esotericism, or in other words, reinterpreting ancient texts to find hidden meanings and unify all religious belief into one. The belief that we need a one world system for the coming age of Aquarius. By new world order, I am talking about a political agenda to create a one world system, one world government, one world economy, unity of humanity into one organism, control over humanity, and submission of the masses.
but today the largest countries of the world have agreed a global plan for recovery and reform. I think a new world order is emerging and with it the foundations of a new and progressive era of international cooperation. To understand what is going on today with respect to the new world order and the new age movement, we must have recourse to the 19th century organization called the Theosophical Society. This organization in particular, among others, is largely responsible for the modern New Age movement and the political doctrine known as the New World Order. The founder of this organization was a woman named Helena Petrovna Blavatsky. Born August 12, 1831, Helena Blavatsky was very interested early in her life in the supernatural and the mythological. From 1848 to 1858, Blavatsky would travel the world to ascertain an understanding of the religious traditions of the world. She claimed to have traveled to South America, Egypt, Canada, France, Greece, Mexico, Tibet, India, Germany, and England during this time. It is said that during this travel she learned many mysteries, secrets, and occult knowledge from every walk of life. With all of this new esoteric information in her mind, she moved to New York in 1873. Then in 1875, she formed an occult organization called the Theosophical Society. She founded this society with two men, Colonel Henry Steele Alcott and William Quan Judge. According to Alcott, Theosophy already had thousands of members and branches all over the world by 1885. After New York, Blavatsky and Alcott established the Theosophical Headquarters in India and the membership roster grew increasingly as time went on. Blavatsky's influence came from her writings. Her first book was entitled Isis Unveiled, published in 1877. She started a magazine in 1887 called Lucifer Magazine. Her principal work, The Secret Doctrine, was then published in 1888. She then wrote The Key to Theosophy and The Voice of Silence. These works are now famous and contained in these writings are the doctrines that helped mold the New Age movement to what it is today. It is said that part of Blavatsky's book, The Secret Doctrine, was channeled to her through an ascended master or highly evolved being called Kuthumi who spoke to her. Belief in these ascended masters who communicate to humanity is very crucial when studying the New Age. We will look at that doctrine later. The age concept that says humanity is leaving the age of Pisces and entering the golden era or age of Aquarius was popularized by Blavatsky, she taught. Theosophists at any rate, some of them who understand the hidden meaning of the universally expected avatars, messiahs, socioshis and Christs, know that it is no end of the world but the consummation of the age, i.e. the close of a cycle which is now fast approaching. Again, the messianic cycle of the man connected with Pisces. It is a cycle, historical, and not very long, but very occult, lasting about 2,155 solar years. It occurred 2,410 and 255 BC, or when the equinox entered into the sign of Ram, and again into that of Pisces. When it enters in a few years the sign of Aquarius, psychologists will have some extra work to do and the psychic idiosyncrasies of humanity will enter on a great change. These theosophists teach that Jesus was simply a representation of the age of Pisces and that he was an initiate into the mystery schools or cults of spiritual teachers and masters. They teach people that the new age of Aquarius is going to be that of a utopia where the world unites into a one world system, the exiting out of Jesus' age and the entering into a new world teacher's age. They say each age is accompanied by a great world teacher, be it Buddha, Jesus, etc. So for the advent of the age of Aquarius, they claim a new world teacher will guide humanity into it. Blavatsky was reluctant to fuse these theosophic beliefs with politics, however. Nonetheless, she still advocated monism and a one world brotherhood or uniting of mankind. In Blavatsky's book, The Key to Theosophy, she lists three main goals of theosophy. Universal brotherhood of humanity without distinction of race, color, or creed. 
to promote the study of the world's religions and to investigate the hidden mysteries of nature. As time went on, Theosophy got very popular. Many prominent figures would join the Theosophical Society from all over the world, and many popular doctrines of today's New Age movement would be molded and shaped by them. Theosophy is the first major New Age group, and they are largely responsible for many of the modern New Age beliefs, including the belief that Jesus represented the Sun God. After studying the occult and the esoteric in depth, I have come to the conclusion that the Zeitgeist movement and the Zeitgeist films are based on Theosophy, Freemasonry, and the New Age. For those who are unfamiliar, in 2007, a man named Peter Joseph released a film called Zeitgeist. This film received millions of views on the internet and became very popular. Then in 2008, Zeitgeist Addendum, the sequel, came out. From there, Peter Joseph established the Zeitgeist movement. Whether Zeitgeist was a film that was intended by Peter Joseph or whoever was behind it to be what it ended up being, I don't know. But I can, I can say that the message that's being uh, expressed by Zeitgeist is without a doubt the most clear depiction of the mystery school ideology. Um, and it's done in such a way to be, it's kind of what I've described as a sort of mystery schools for dummies. Um, it's, it's a way to get people that normally wouldn't be setting foot to any, uh, any various secret societies. It's a way to indoctrinate them and get them to believe in the same sort of elitist mindset uh, without having to go through any particular initiation. It's also uh, usually accompanied with an idea of pride, that is that, that is that, um, the people believe that what they believe uh, is uh, only for a select few and that sort of has this way of sticking with them and that um, that nobody believes what I believe and, and so it's sort of this elitist mindset that comes with that as well. The first Zeitgeist film was divided into three sections. The second section was about 9-11 being an inside job. The third section was about the corruption of the Federal Reserve. I have no real issue with the last two sections, but since the release of the first Zeitgeist film, Peter Joseph, the creator, has distanced himself from the 9-11 issue altogether. This makes me wonder if the only reason he spoke about 9-11 in the first film was to get the 9-11 truth movement on board with his agenda. The first section of the film is what I have an issue with. Contained in this section is the modern belief system of the New Age movement, the Theosophical Society, and Freemasonry. With the zeitgeist, it's, you know, Satan's good at what he does, bottom line. And the first one, what they do is they, they come right out in, uh, in the first segment, I think like the first 38 minutes, they just go after Jesus Christ, his deity, Basically, what they try to do is convince everyone that Jesus Christ is just a knockoff of Horus and a lot of the other pagan deities, and they try to draw all these parallels and similarities. These parallels and similarities have all been debunked by, by Bible scholars and things. In fact, I think there's even a couple challenges up on the internet, the Zeitgeist Challenge, where they offer money if they can actually. So they've been debunked. I've done, oh my word, I don't know how many teachings debunking both, both movies. But if somebody were to see that for the first time and not know any different, oh, hey, it sounds convincing, sounds, you know, this or that. And so what they've got to do is discredit the Word of God, the deity of Jesus Christ. As Theosophy